Historically, Android phones are much more up my alley. Wide ranging customization, the open user interface, and very robust feature sets that allow you to make your phone basically do whatever you want your phone to do. Yet, every single time I pick up an iPhone, and yes, I know that you're not able to do a large variety of the things you can do in the Android ecosystem, there's just something undeniably magical in this iPhone experience, how refined and precise it is. Months later, using this phone alongside Android devices, if you're someone who's on the Android side and wondering what a shift to this might look like, that this is hopefully a pretty well-rounded picture for you guys. Now, I'm actually gonna start this video with battery life on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. I've used a lot of Android phones and very simply, I mean, this just has remarkable battery life and better battery life than pretty much all of them with the one exception of the S23 Ultra. In my past videos, for those of you who haven't been here before, I break down what sort of like an average work day in my life looks like throughout the week, right? So either working on YouTube videos or in the morning, breaking down treatment plans, communicating with case managers, with care teams, or the clients that I'm going to be working with throughout the day, writing up my notes, and then having my sessions with my clients later on in the afternoon and evening of the day, and then usually coming home and writing the notes for those things. The S23 Ultra absolutely handles all of that exceptionally well, and so does the iPhone 14 Pro Max. I mean, this, this is a phone that's not going to give you any sort of like battery anxiety throughout the day. Now, for someone like myself, because of the structuring of my day, like my Galaxy Z Fold 4, for example, I definitely have to charge that up at least once per day. It's not a nuisance for me, but objectively, this has much better battery life and, uh, it's a powerhouse. And that is with a large array of different things. So texting, video, phone calls, gaming also, which I'll get to in a second, but gaming on this is fantastic. Pretty much no matter what it is that you throw at the iPhone 14 Pro Max, even all these months later, it's not really a concern. Gaming on the iPhone 14 Pro Max is just a superb experience. I mean, the screen is beautiful. Although I do give a slight edge to the S23 Ultra in terms of like, A, the display is a bit bigger, but also in terms of the color profile that you're getting and the crisp is, the crisp, this cri the crispness of the display. This is not a bad viewing experience. It's superb in basically every single way. If you're a big gamer like myself and playing, say like, for example, Honkai Star Rail, which is a super fun game. Um, it's from the creators of Genshin Impact. Genshin Impact on this phone, you can play 120 frames per second, no problem. It's gonna handle basically maximum everything at 120. Honkai Star Rail, the same exact thing. You can hit everything at absolutely maximum settings and it's gonna function perfectly perfectly fine. You're not going to have to worry about lagging or hitching. Phone is going to get a bit warm, but in my experience, that hasn't inhibited performance at all. I mean, this thing's just flat out a powerhouse. And so say you are coming from the Android ecosystem and looking for a phone to handle your gaming needs. This basically has you covered. Uh, someone told me that the peaches and the cucumbers and the eggplants are creepy. That was not my intention, but give me a dolphin emoji or a turtle if you guys think this looks good. I think it looks really good. Something else to note as well is that the speakers on the iPhone 14 Pro Max to this day are still like the best speakers in a phone that I've personally used. better than the Fold 4, better than the Pixel 7 Pro. The S23 Ultra speakers are really, really good, but the 14 Pro Max speakers are just better, honestly. Bassier, pack more of a punch. There's more detail in the sound that you're getting out of the speakers. Um, for myself, I'm someone that enjoys listening to um, like audiobooks or podcasts for psychology, staying up to date with theoretical orientations, treatments, and I can leave this outside of the shower and hear everything perfectly crisp and clear, uh, which is something I couldn't really do on, say, for example, the Pixel 6 Pro, but 
you can definitely do it here. In my previous Fold 4 videos, I talk a lot about how I use the Fold 4 to complement my work lifestyle, right? Like using Adobe Acrobat, for example, and signing um, paperwork and clinical notes for the clients that I'm working with, confidentiality papers and things like that. I actually stumbled upon a different application that might be helpful for a lot of you guys. It's called UPDF. And UPDF is great because it has a permanent purchasing function, unlike Adobe Acrobat that hides a lot of things behind the paywall. And you can never actually just own full rights and access on your account. You have to constantly renew either monthly or yearly. UPDF, you're able to actually just buy it outright and have access to a host of different things. You can edit, annotate, organize your PDFs. For me personally, being able to sign within the sheets is really helpful. You can convert your PDFs to different file formats. And what's really nice is that for someone like me that has a Galaxy Fold 4, but also has an iPad and a MacBook and also a Windows uh, laptop, no matter what operating system you're on, you can use PDF to live sync everything. PDF did reach out to me, but if I didn't think that their product was worth talking about, I wouldn't have spent my time talking about it. But for those of you guys looking for an alternative to something like Adobe Acrobat, I think it's awesome. If you guys use my link in the comment section down below, you guys can get 54% off of your purchase. Now my Galaxy S23 Ultra review video, I mentioned that the Google Pixel 7 Pro and the iPhone 14 Pro Max, I find to personally be easier one hand use devices. A lot of people were not very happy about that, but you know, I acknowledge that as someone with larger hands myself, the S23 Ultra is not too difficult for me to use. I can reach the top shelf and there's a lot of one hand use accessibility options on that phone that make it a easy one hand use experience. But I feel like more organically, it's easier on the iPhone 14 Pro Max and the 7 Pro just because of the smaller form factor. They're a bit more balanced in the hand weight wise, I feel. It doesn't mean that the one hand usability on the S23 Ultra is bad. I just find it to be better on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. All right, so Dynamic Island was something that shipped with the phone and a huge deal was made about it from basically every media outlet and reviewers. When I first reviewed it in my initial iPhone 14 Pro Max video, I said that it's cool, but objectively speaking, it is pretty much a gimmick and it's something that you can do on say like the S23 Ultra or basically on any Android phone because there are apps that replicate essentially the same experience that you're getting here on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. That being said, it works works well and I think it's a cool way for your phone to sort of interact with you on the flip side of you interacting with it all of the time but I do think it's a feature that is helpful in a number of different ways but I just don't think it's like the main reason to buy this phone because like you can replicate it on Android devices but it is cool. <laughs> I have to say there's a beautiful cohesiveness between the iPhone, my iPad Pro that I use for my clinical work as a therapist, and also between my MacBook Pro, which I use for entering emails with companies and things like that, but primarily as a video editing tool for YouTube. AirDrop is super user friendly and you do have nearby share and quick share between Android devices and Galaxy devices that honestly do work just as fast, I would say in my experience, um, though sometimes not as consistently. I would say AirDrop on this this works like nine times out of 10, those work like eight times out of 10, which isn't a huge disparity, but it's something using them over time you kind of pick up on. For example, if I'm transferring pictures from this to the MacBook uh, for a video review, like we're gonna do in the camera section, it's easy, super user-friendly. So as a cohesive unit whole, that ecosystem has worked really well for me in like a number of different ways even though I do usually prefer my Android devices, right? Like my Galaxy Fold 4 is my primary go-to, but uh, that doesn't mean I can't acknowledge that like, this is pretty great. There are certain things that when you're using a phone, you sort of take for granted sometimes until you're using it directly next to like another phone for comparison sake. And haptics are something that I kind of subconsciously acknowledged were good on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, but it wasn't until I was reviewing it directly next to the S23 Ultra that I realized like, man, the haptics on this are like really, really good. The S23 Ultra haptics are not bad, but these are just stronger. Uh, you feel the vibration in your hand more. There's like even honestly something as simple as holding down on the home screen to activate that sort of uh, that jiggle mode. Literally just holding that down and the feedback that you get from that is super satisfying when you're scrolling through things like in the system settings. 
it just feels good. Camera time. So usually in these videos, I just sort of like present to you guys the pictures and video. I don't talk too much. I kind of let you decide what it is that you think. And largely, it seems like you guys really appreciate that. Um, the only thing I'll say is that iPhones are known for having great camera systems. These are awesome. The video is great. But the phone struggles with highlights um, in a number of different situations. Uh, but again, I'll let you decide what you think. Final Cut Pro on the iPad Pro videos are definitely coming here to the channel. I'm going to be doing um, sort of like a tips and tricks video for that to kind of help you guys in terms of user interface stuff and also comparing it to my MacBook Pro so you can kind of get an idea of what that experience might be like if you have one of those devices and you're not really sure which way to go or if you want one or whatever. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much again for stopping by and hanging out. I wish you guys a fantastic remainder of your day, afternoon, or night, depending on the time it is that you are watching this. And as always, guys, um, little astronaut guy, uh, if you can see him, there we go. Uh, peace, love, and adios. Have a great day.